Hello, my darlings. I hope you're doing absolutely exquisite and fabulous. If you do, leave this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe to my channel to join this fabulous and gorgeous smelling family. We are growing so, so well and I'm so happy to welcome new beauties and boys and girls. I am so, so happy to welcome you on this channel. And uh, this is a very exciting video, guys. I was super, super pumped to do this. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I would suggest you do so because then you can be included in such videos. But I asked you on Instagram, what is your absolute favorite one and only fragrance for life? So this video is basically top fragrances according to you guys, the best of the best. And what is absolutely fantastic is that I actually own most of them, which means we really vibe at the same level when it comes to fragrances, which makes me ultra happy. And I am going to go through all of them. Uh, these are basically the top of the top for you. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I must say some really surprised me, really surprised me. Some not so much, but let's get into it, guys. So the first fragrance, and by the way, uh, if you don't know how I did it, I basically got so many messages from you. Let me actually show you because that is absolutely insane. Um, where is it? Okay, there you go, guys. So these are all the messages. That is crazy how many I got. And I picked top 15. I thought I would do 10, but no, it was too much. I picked top 15 according to you. So the ones that had the most votes, the most of you voted for them. These are the ones. So these are the top 15, the best fragrances in the world according to you. And let's get into it because I'm talking too much. All right. So the first one, guys was an absolute classic. I wasn't too surprised with this. So there we go. That is Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. I do have um, the intense version here in Poland, but I also, of course, have the original, which is Bock, Bock, Bock. <laughs> what is wrong with my tongue sometimes? Back in South Africa, I have the original. And yeah, this is just a classic fragrance so beautiful. This is one of very, very few patchouli based fragrances that I adore to bits. Um, this is a very warm and cozy and beautiful, smooth patchouli. There's not too much earthiness to it. Uh, the intense, of course, is more uh, fruity vanilla, I would say and the original is a little bit more zesty in the beginning. I love them both. You mostly voted for the original, so Chanel Coco Mademoiselle EDP. So that is the first one, guys. The second one, um, also a classic, and honestly, I could not pick which one had the most votes from you, so I'm just gonna show the whole range. So the whole range is also from Chanel, and that is the Chance range. So you mainly voted for for Chance EDP, Chance Au Fresh, and Chance En Tendre, which I do not own, unfortunately. But thanks to you, that might change. Um, so with these, apparently absolutely love them, and for a good reason. These are perfect for any occasion, really. These are very soft, light floral fragrances uh, with some muskiness to it, sometimes woodiness. The uh, fresh one is very, very woody, citrusy. Uh, the original is more like floral, musky, slightly peppery. The Eau de Toilette has um, some more freshness. It doesn't work on me, but honestly, so many of you love it as well. And then we have Eau Tendre, uh, which has also the EDT and EDP version. So yes, you love them all. The Chanel Chance range is definitely a staple in your collections, and so is in mine. Um, this one I've had for years. I don't even know how many bottles I went through. I love this one so much and what's great about them, 
maybe with exception of Autant because that really didn't last on me when I tested it. But these two, the EDP and Au Fresh, have very good longevity on me. So yes, you love them, I love them and I'm super happy that they made into this list because they're classic and they're not much talked about these days. Next, this I think, no, this one I'm gonna leave for last and I'm gonna move on to something else, sorry. But I'm gonna leave the one that had the most votes for last. Uh, now, the next one that you, that surprised me. You love it so much. I got at least 15 votes for that one. And that is Christian Dior Private Blend Ur Ispahan. And I must say, I have some other favorite ouds. This is not in my top 10 by any means, but apparently for you, this is the one to go. Uh, Oud Ispahan is to me a little bit, maybe slightly too masculine actually, but this is actually a beautiful oud. If I would recommend something also from Christian Dior when it comes to oud that I love a little bit more is Oud Rosewood. It's more long lasting and more potent in my opinion. Oud Ispahan didn't really last on me that well, but leave me a comment below if you're the one who voted for Oud Ispahan, because I would love to know how the longevity is on you. So yes, that's the next one. Oud Ispahan, very, very surprising for me because I didn't think it's that popular. So that's that. The next one. Olympia and not the EDP which also was very very surprising for me. This is the Olympia Intense by Paco Rabanne and again I was super surprised because not many people rave about it. Um, I was the person who really really just came along and raved about it on YouTube so so much and I didn't really think that so many of you actually love it and that would be your like one and only fragrance. This is actually the old version that I'm really holding close to my heart because it's unfortunately way better than the newer formulation so I'm trying not to use it up but I do have the newer version it's not that bad but I think I still have it from the 2019 batch which is still good the newer ones a little bit shitty I must say but with Olympia Intense apparently you absolutely adore it again I got over 20 messages in regards to the intense version so this one is amber heaven to me it's very sweet a little bit middle eastern but not too much almost leaning gourmand but still a very very nice deep amber with some salt and vanilla just beautiful very very long lasting this one fantastic projection Again, the newest formulations are not the best. Uh, I will try to link down below whatever I can find. But yeah, Olympia Intense was definitely, definitely high on the list. Next. What I have next is a Dior fragrance and that is Dior Addict. Another absolute classic. And what really shows in this poll uh, that I made for you is that you actually don't really lean towards those newer releases. You actually go for absolute classics, which makes me think quite a bit because, you know, uh, especially if you work in the industry of perfumes, you really try to show your audience the newest releases. You're literally like chasing all of those new releases to be the first one to show it or to find something super super unique but all in all at the end of the day you actually go for classics which is very very interesting and makes me actually happy because these are very good fragrances this one is beautiful this is a white floral um, vanilla fragrance quite powdery potent super sexy super smooth beautiful fragrance i was definitely too young to wear it when i was a teenager now it's the time so i don't know how it is with you do you also wear it in summertime i actually don't i usually wear it when it's raining or when it's cold but apparently for you for so many of you is a signature scent so i'm very very happy that i have it and yes, you love it so much. Great longevity, if I didn't mention that earlier. 
Next one. Another absolute classic. This really surprised me, guys, how much you love it and how much you vote for it. For so many of you, this is a one and only, and that is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Intense. Again, nobody, like nobody, as far as I remember, uh, mentioned the Eau de Toilette. Most of you that I saw the comments of did love the Eau Intense. So, thumbs up for that. I love this. Woo! so much that I lost the cap. I love this one two bits. This is the ultimate fresh fragrance with muskiness, it's sweet, it's citrusy, but it's very sexy. It's definitely that out of the shower vibe, but make it potent. This one is a little bit even sticky, like sticky sweet, but make it fresh. Very, very nice fragrance. I love it and I do not imagine my collection without it. I'm not the biggest fan of the bottle, but what can we do? It's a great fragrance for summertime, for me at least. Okay, now let's mention some niche because uh, this got so many votes, like so many votes. And uh, I'm going to show you both of the versions because they probably got the same amount of votes. And I honestly was not able to count it down. Um, so we have the Lina and the Lina exclusive by Parfums de Marly. Guys, I am so surprised that you love it so much. I mean, not really because this is a beautiful fragrance, but let's be honest, this is an expensive one. Uh, it's very overhyped. At least it was like a year or two ago, super, super overhyped. So I was kind of thinking that you might be over it, but no, you still absolutely love it. And no matter if you go with the original Delina or Delina exclusive, actually for my original Delina, the bottle is a little bit battered already it's seen its better days but this one is brand new and fresh so I will be holding this one closer to the lens of the camera so yes um, you both love it uh, the exclusive version is more vanilla a little bit more powdery uh, it has some woody accords it has agar wood which I love it's a little bit deeper and it has a beautiful pear note in the beginning and the Lina exclusive you guys probably already know this is very very unique but very feminine fragrance it's rose it's nutmeg it is rhubarb so yes this one is more like floral fruity this one is more vanilla floral Love them both. Uh, they both have amazing longevity and sillage. To me, exclusive version is way better when it comes to that, but this one still is not bad at all. So yes, guys, this got so many votes. It's insane, insane. Definitely like the top three of the number of votes um, that would be in that top three, the Lina and the Lina exclusive. So that is that. Next one. This one also got so many votes, guys. It's insane. I'm, again, very surprised because this is a very, very old fragrance. I was a little girl when it was first released. Of course, back in the day, it was much more potent and better. But again, what can we do? This is Hypnotic Poison EDT. Again, no votes for the EDP. No votes. I, I am sure it got no votes. The EDT got so many. And... I love this fragrance so much at the moment. This is like this beautiful vanilla almond fragrance with slight touches of coconut and peach and um, tonka. Ugh, just amazing. So cozy, so feminine, so sexy at the same time. This is definitely a man magnet of a fragrance. So yes, I will be doing a man magnet fragrances very, very soon. I'll probably record it maybe even today. So stay tuned for that. But this one is definitely on your list when it comes to the best fragrances of all time. All right, this one, unfortunately, so many of you, if anyone voted for this, 
uh, you guys voted for the previous versions of it. The newest one, the 2021, got absolutely no votes, no hype. I know that uh, most people are very, very dissatisfied with it. So yeah, it also says a lot. And most of you chose the 2017 version, which I also do have, and that is Miss Dior Eau de Parfum. And this is again, 2017 version with that blood orange, oh, so amazing actually let's make it my scent of the day because we need to make that tradition alive again mm. this is slightly slightly similar to coco mademoiselle but this one has more of that um orangey tone uh, the patchouli is also like very warm and sweet and basically warms up the fragrance but this one there is something different about it to me this one is a very sexy fragrance to me this is a sexier version of Coco Mademoiselle to be honest um, very long lasting the 2017 version it is so beautiful it has such a beautiful packaging really you cannot go wrong with this um, if you can still find it, just get it. So yes, guys, you really, really apparently still love it. And I'm sure so many of us are very unhappy that they keep reformulating that beautiful fragrance. So that is Miss Dior. Glorious of a fragrance, I know, so, so good. Okay, next one. Again, I was very surprised. This is such a classic. To me, is a very much of a staple in my collection. Again, reformulations are absolute BS, but you still voted for it. And this got at least 30 to 40 votes. Insane. That is Alien, the original. You love it. I love it and again another one that makes me so so happy and like content that there are so many similarities with, uh, within my and your tastes. Fantastic. So this one of course it's ambery woody and that indolic jasmine that's very popular. Uh, it was very unique on the market when it first came out in 2007. I loved it to bits. I still love it, but these days it's more of my day-to-day um, -day fragrance. You can call it signature. Um, it's not like this, you know, dark and sexy and deep fragrance. It's more, it's became more of a daytime one, but I still love it. I still don't see myself ever being without it because the DNA is just fantastic. So yes, Alien got so many votes and again I was so sure that you might be sick of it by now but you're not you're not <laughs> all right what's next guys uh, I have just a couple of fragrances but I'm now going to talk about the one that I do not have with me I actually did own it but I don't anymore and that is Insolence by Guerlain and this really surprised me actually because this is not the easiest fragrance to pull off in my opinion this is basically like a sugary violet fragrance um quite powdery it is very out there it's very unique it does make a statement in a room in my opinion being girly at the same time so yeah with that one i'm super surprised with that one i'm really really surprised so uh it's nice to see that you love also those you know not too hyped very unique fragrances that have been around for years i am pretty sure that the ones uh, of you that voted for it you probably have it in your stash for years by now tell me in the comments below if you do because that's very interesting to know um, but yes, this is definitely the one that you voted for a lot and now another fragrance that you also voted for a lot and I do not have it because I just personally do not like it. This is probably the only one that I just don't like um, and maybe just on me. I know it is a very decadent fragrance. This is something that again makes a st statement. It's dark, it's sexy, but to me for some reason it's just too complex on my skin and I am talking about the Tom Ford 
uh, the black orchid and the bottle is beautiful the whole entourage of it is beautiful it also has a very good longevity and lasting power actually my mom used to wear it back in the day uh, actually that was a time of her divorce so I'm sure she will not ever go back to that fragrance once again to not bring those memories back but yes she really did wear it and loved it and that's what made her feel strong and confident in those, you know, very difficult life situations. So tell me again in the comments below uh, if it also makes you feel that way. Is it, you know, the fact that it's so like in your face and makes you feel confident? I would love to know. On me, unfortunately, it doesn't work. Uh, the combination of the notes that are in there just clashes on my skin. It sometimes happens, it happens to the best of us. So unfortunately I cannot wear it, but the bottle is exquisite, I must admit. So that is Black Orchid. The next one, guys, is the one that it's not too expensive. It's a great all-rounder, even though it's more of a darker fragrance, in my opinion, it actually still works in summertime. So I'm guessing that might be your great signature scent. And that is Versace uh, Crystal Noir Eau de Parfum and the Eau de Toilette. You usually ask me which one is better. There's really not much of a difference. This one might be slightly more long lasting, but not too much. So yes, this one is like this coconutty, spicy floral, very oriental. Uh, it also has a lot of woody notes. This is really, really pretty. Uh, it opens up with pepper and cardamom and ginger. So, you know, it's very, very spicy in the beginning, but it's mellowed down by that coconut and gardenia. It's just so, so nice. I wish Versace uh, made more of these, you know, sexy dark fragrances, but literally the only one that we have in their collection that's dark and sexy and cool is this one. Like, Come on Versace, make something new. I would love to see something new from their range. Like, come on, we're done with those freshies of yours. Okay, next. Mont Guerlain. And again, this one, uh, I cannot even pinpoint which one got more votes, but basically you were voting between the EDP, the original that I again have in South Africa, and this one, which is the Intense. The Intense is more vanilla, more lavender and more licorice. Everything is amped up with it. I love it two bits. Uh, I think that it's worth having both, to be honest, because you can use the EDP in the summer uh, and for, you know, like a daytime fragrance. This one is better for nights out and cold weather. I must say this is definitely one of my favorite formal fragrances so if I have an event that is you know required um, to be more formal I would definitely go for Mont Guerlain because sometimes Coco Mademoiselle can be a little bit boring so you know sometimes when you go to these events probably more than 50% of women at those events would be wearing something like Coco Mademoiselle. So I like switching this up and going for Mangerlang because it's still, even though it's a very popular fragrance, it's still quite unique, especially in that surrounding. So yes, I love that you love it. It is a beautiful, elegant, feminine fragrance with that nice lavender touch. So, so good. Okay, I have, I think, two fragrances left, so this is gonna be good. Next one that was ultra, ultra hyped up by you and so many votes for this one, guys. This one also surprised me a little bit because I didn't realize how many people love this fragrance. And that is Rouge Malakis by Armani Privé. And I personally love it. Of course, I got some uh, backlash for saying that I will probably not repurchase it, which is like, what? Like, some people really don't know what to do with their time and what to get angry about. Um, I will probably not repurchase it because um, I have some slight problem with sage here from time to time. And I have so many fragrances that I think this bottle will actually last me for a long, long time. But if I see it on a great discount, like the 100ml, for example, 
I will probably still get it. But nevertheless, this is a beautiful, highly, highly potent on tuberose and amber fragrance. As I mentioned, it has sage in it, so it is quite herbal in the beginning, so keep that in mind. But I think nobody is bothered by it because so many of you love it. And to me, the longevity is very decent. Sillage is also quite decent. So, and the bottle, I, I probably love the most out of the whole Armani Privé range. It's so pretty. And the scent is also beautiful. It's very, very classy, very sophisticated but it has slight sexiness to it. Uh, yeah, it's basically like all in one. You can wear it in summer, in winter. It's mature, but sexy. You can even wear it to parties. It's a great all-rounder. So I see the reasons why it would be like your one and only because it's good, it's good. <laughs> so the next one, again, got a lot of votes, a lot of votes. And this is the fragrance that actually started my channel. This what made me just, you know, just sit and do it. And that is La Belle by Jean-Paul Gaultier. And I cannot believe how many of you love it as much as I do. Um, even though I do not wear it that much, even though, look, I did use quite a bit. When you turn the bottle around, you can actually see I used more than half. So that's good. And it is so beautiful. It is definitely more of that flirty fragrance. It's not as mature and elegant. You can still wear it for elegant occasions if you want to be very, very sweet. Um, I love it though. This is that beautiful pear and vetiver that grounds this fragrance and makes it slightly, slightly earthy and a lot, a lot, a lot of vanilla. So I love it. Great longevity and lasting power. I really hope they do not reformulate it because I'm going to sue them <laughs> for emotional damage. <laughs> All right. Last one. Are you ready? So, the fragrance that got the most votes, hands down, the most votes, literally every other message of yours was this fragrance. It's insane. It is insane how many of you wear it. And are you ready? Drum rolls. Dum, 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 dum. We have the winner of the whole roundup that I just showed you. This got probably over 50 votes and that is Baccarat Rouge. Guys, Baccarat Rouge. My favorite baby, my favorite baby. Some of you did say you prefer the x but still the original has been very, very close to your heart. Again, I got over 50 votes for this one. Incredible. So, you know, this also says a lot because there are so many of you that want me to do very affordable fragrances on my channel. But then it turns out that most of you actually have very expensive niche fragrance as your signature scents. Not you, I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> so this one is honestly exquisite of a fragrance. Um, where I live, I don't have a problem with wearing it because literally almost no one wears it here. Uh, people here are more into that, you know, whole, uh, black Opium, La Vie Belle, Chanel Coco, if anything, fragrance range. So wearing Baccarat in Poland is still very, very cool. And I'm very happy that I'm still here because I will probably me be moving uh, at some point in the near future. But since I'm still here, I can rock it. I don't wear it around the house when I'm working because you know, it's a very expensive fragrance and I do cherish it, honestly. I will definitely buying the x which was stolen from me, which is the massive bummer. I mean, like they really could have stolen any fragrance. Why did they steal the x of Bacora? Can you believe it? What a bummer. But yeah, this one, super potent, super long lasting. Everyone can smell you. The molecules of this fragrance, by the way, 
um, just so you know, because I hear some very, very weird statements sometimes on YouTube. I don't watch YouTube too much, but you know, sometimes I want to make some references, etc, etc. You know, it's my job, I have to keep up. And I hear so many like silly statements that this is a molecular fragrance. Guys, every fragrance is molecular because everything is based on molecules, okay? However, what it should be said is that the molecules of this fragrance, because of the high concentration of alcohol, are basically bursting out in the air. That's the, the easiest way to put it. So this one, as all other fragrances, is molecular, but the design of that fragrance is made to be projecting. That's what should be said. I, I said it many times before, but I think I might have been misunderstood by some people and they repeated it in a way that's not correct. So now I am correcting everything that should be said about it. This is basically chemistry. Uh, I was actually talking about this with my mom who is a pharmacist, so she has the chemistry of molecules and everything in that little finger. She knows everything. So basically these molecules are designed to basically like pop out of your skin. So this is a very interesting thing and I'm sure also this is the reason why it's so expensive because it's designed in a slightly different way. You know, the, it doesn't really sit close to your skin. The fragrance really, really does project. So enough of my rant, but I hope I uh, make sense now. So this is the winner, guys. This is the winner. Beautiful amber, sweet fragrance with saffron. I love it so much. And yeah, you chose it. So here we have the full roundup of your best of the best fragrances in the world that you would only keep in your collections. So that is it, guys. I had so much fun doing, putting this together, filming this, editing this. It's so, so much fun because I am so happy always to know your opinions and to include you in the videos. So yes, thank you so much for watching. And next time when I do this, please make sure you follow me on Instagram so you can also play with us this beautiful game of fragrance. So yes, guys, see you in my next, blah, 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 what am I saying? See you in my next one. Yeah. That's it. That's what I wanted to say. Bye. Peace out. I'm done.